Hello and welcome to the Intuitive Heart Healing Podcast. My name is Valerie McLaughlin and I am your host for today's podcast. I started this podcast because I wanted to bring stories and healing, channel message, meditation, all different tools and techniques to you all. And on today's podcast, I am having a chat with Jean, who has been a client of mine for a few years now, and I'm so happy to actually share her story with all of you because it's such a beautiful and amazing journey, which she is still going on. But the moral of the story, and it's a little bit longer than are my normal podcast, but the moral of the story is not to give up, to keep moving forward and keep looking for ways to heal and improve and grow and evolve. So I hope you take the time, listen with your open heart, and enjoy this episode. Well, I'd like to uh, welcome Jean to the Intuitive Heart Healing Podcast. Welcome, Jean. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm actually really excited and uh, just going to kind of preference this a little bit that I've been asking Jean to come on the podcast for about a year now and uh, and just kind of like keep planting the seed because I one of the reasons why I created the podcast is not only to tell my stories and talk to other people, but I also wanted uh, to bring people on who I've worked with did have gone on this journey and really kind of talk about their journey because we learn so much from each other and each other's journey and everybody's journey is so different and I think Jean is very talented and uh, has all these beautiful amazing gifts and that's been part of the journey of uh, having them and then putting them like in a box and now kind of rediscovering them again. And I think you're really in a really good place. And I really thought you were you were last year, but uh, you weren't quite ready. But I really feel like you're really in a good, good place. And when I say good place, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's more of a place where I feel like you believe more in yourself than you ever had, right? Oh, I totally agree. Last year would not have been a good time. Yeah. yeah, but I, I could kind of see where it was going and where you were going. So I'm really I'm happy that we w- weighed it because in the growth in just this last year has been um, amazing. So um, really great to be here and watching. And we were kind of just talking beforehand and trying to remember how we actually met and when we actually met. Uh so, and we came up with, we believe it was after May of 2019, in 2019. Yeah. 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 So um, I want to kind of start off with there, like where, where you were at when we kind of first met in, in 2019. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but like, I think you kind of remember sort of where you're at. Oh, total mess. Total mess, total insecurity. Uh, And it wasn't my my first time trying to heal myself because it's been an ongoing process for years. And it's kind of like, same thing as doing a diet and exercise program. You know it, but you just can't do it. And... Eventually, I got so bad, and I can't remember if it was before we met or after, but I got so bad that I, well, I was having some pretty bad thoughts, and I actually woke up laying on the sidewalk after losing Zoe, so I think it might have been after we met, where I finally went to a doctor, a traditional doctor. And that did no good because first thing they do is put you on medication. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
I found you by chance. You just popped up on my newsfeed and I was just, you know, I had just lost my sister and I wasn't home and I just couldn't figure out where to go or what to do. And you were doing live readings on your pot on, on Facebook. And I popped in and I said, yes, please. And all you did was grab your head and it's like, yep, that's my head. My head is a mess and could not get a thought out to save my life. But um, it's been a long process. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I think I frustrated you a few times. <laughs> uh, I, wouldn't. I think you thought you frustrated me more than you actually you were really frustrated. I think that was because you were frustrated within yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's been some times like, okay, we've been down this road again. She mm -hmm. doesn't see it. Um, but uh, she's going to get there. I know she yeah. is. Yeah. I know she is. I know she's going to get there. Um, well, it's just that after a while, when you, you start, when you used to have abilities and then you lose them, and then you just have this constant bad thing after bad thing after bad thing happen. You just, you lose yourself. You just, you know, getting by day by day is about all you can do. And, um, and I've had some teachers that weren't on the up and up and they were a little bit more of uh, energy vampires, we shall call them. Um, but, um, no, it's been a long journey back. And you had more confidence in me than I did. Um, and I just kept on remembering that the universe has to be a little bit more clear. Because <laughs> I just could not figure anything out. And you would see all these things for me. And and I just, I couldn't see it. And you were saying, I, you know, being a healer. And I remember when I couldn't even say the word. Mm -hmm. I physically could not say the word. I was get. I only think I got half of the word out. I would get caught in my throat and, um, you know, setting boundaries for myself. And You know, I, I like what you said, um, you know, when you started, you were like healing yourself because I, I talk about this a lot. Like, even though I've been part of your journey, you're still the healer in all this. Mm -hmm. And, and I like the fact that you really recognize that and that um, you got to the point where you're at, which we'll get to, we'll got, you got to the point with where you're at because of you mm -hmm. and, and you had some people that have helped you along the way, but mm -hmm. like you are the ones, you were the ones that kept driving it and even like reaching out, like part of the healing journey is not just even though we are our own powerful healers doesn't mean that we don't ask for help and we don't ask for things and and i think that's that's a good thing to recognize like you always knew that you wanted to feel different than what you were feeling mm -hmm. because, you, know, you know you weren't in the best um spot there was a lot going on in your life at the time when we first met but you kept going you kept you didn't give up yeah I'm a little stubborn you that way not give up no um even when you slipped and <laughs> slipped um I like that I, I've never used that before but even when you slipped <laughs> uh and and kind of gone back to like in your old ways or your old cycles, but mm -hmm. being somebody on the outside watching you go through this and uh, those slips, as I just refer to them, uh, got smaller. Mm -hmm. Like they might happen, but the time to, to kind of get you out of it got smaller and smaller. And they weren't as severe. And they weren't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I... And that's, you know, just this morning, that's what we were talking about, too, this, before we started, that I remember I would swear the universe was out to get to me. Uh, if something went wrong, 
even if it was a complete utter accident no I did something what mm -hmm. did I do in a previous life because obviously I must have done something um because it, it, I, I would just spiral out of control and they were I don't know how to put it, but it's it's gotten better. Um, I did have the bad habit of reaching out and then fortunately reaching out to not only the people that could help me, like reaching out to you and the group, but also reaching out to people that I thought were in my corner that weren't. And that was something that I had to learn on my own. And, you know, I'm still wrestling with the, you know, I, I like, I don't like to be mean to people, but, or cause problems, but I'm trying not to slip <laughs> shall we say, <laughs> back into, well, I, I feel bad because I, I really shouldn't have done that and then get drawn back in and, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to stand my ground, but, um, it's it's been a long process and you said about doing it about a year ago i was so confused a year ago i didn't i didn't know where i would be i still don't know where i'm going to be you know but that's before, before we jump into that part i kind of want to stay back uh bring up two other things before we kind of move on from like the okay. last year uh i want to a talk about uh your gifts because you brought them up your spiritual okay. gifts or or things so if you don't mind sharing like when did you originally um discover them discover what you had and then why you chose to kind of like put them in a box and put a lid on it they were always there I didn't know what they were. Um, I guess the biggest one that I remember was when my nephew dropped. Um, I'm trying to think how far back that was. I thinking I was in fourth grade, maybe, or just starting fourth grade, somewhere around there. Um, and it wasn't anything out of the ordinary because I always knew stuff. Um, it got me in trouble in school because I would know the answers and they thought I was cheating. Um, but I knew where he was. But nobody would listen to me. But my mom did. But my mom had the gift too. Um why she didn't pick up on where he was, I don't know, but I knew where he was and I told her and that's when they finally found him. And then unfortunately it was too late. Um, so it's always been kind of like a knowing and just, you know, not really hearing, I'm just starting to hear, but um, it's always been, growing up when I was younger, um, even into my early 20s. Uh, a lot of it was dreams that would come true. Um, very vivid dreams to the point where that was when I started backing off from it because I would get into fights with my sister. We shared a room growing up and she would be telling me about something really amazing that happened and I'd be bored because she already told me. I didn't tell you what just happened. And I would repeat it word for word back to her. And she says, that's impossible, it just happened. And I said, you told me that, and so it just, and I remember, I said, that's it, enough, I'm done. That's so funny. And you talking about that just brought up a memory about me doing that to my sister, <laughs> which I totally forgot about. All that time I thought I was hiding and when my sister realized that I had these gifts, I couldn't understand why. And now you're like telling the story. I was like, oh my God, I've been there, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. And of course I would blurt things out that nobody knew and I would get the look from mom, 
like, you know, like, did you overhear that? Did you, are you eavesdropping? You know, all sorts of stuff. Um, in, I would say high school age, it didn't shut off completely um, because I saw some things, um, some weird things manifest right after my nephew died. But the one thing was I, I made up a stupid song called the Venetian Blind of Darkness because all of a sudden it got dark. It was like, and I heard like a slap. And so I figured I shut it off completely. Some things would poke through. Um, like we were all getting into a car and my brother was driving. And I said, now, can you get the stuff off the roof that you put on the roof so you don't drive off with it like you did last time? And he would start arguing with me. And he said, there's nothing on the roof. I never did that. He would get out and look and it was on the roof. So, yeah. So, you know, little things like that. Um, so I had healing, but I only did it with animals. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't actually know what I did. I just, you know, my mom would come home with one of her dogs and they she, she'd be all upset saying, you know, the vet says it's time to put them down. I said, no, it's not. And in a couple of days they were better. So, and I started working for that same vet and I got in trouble because I gave somebody advice and the villain that complained to the main vet and he's sitting there and he says, whatever she said, no, he says, don't leave him. He says, she has kept animals alive longer after I passed, told them that they wouldn't live. So he's sitting there, he says, whatever advice she's giving is not going to hurt. Um, he said she was actually bad for business there for a while. <laughs> but um, I just lost it. I don't know. I think most of it happened. I think, well, the last dream I had was when my mom died. And that was in 91, October of 91. And then nothing after that. Because um, I was so thoroughly convinced that I'd be able to heal her. Mm -hmm. And she was going to come home from the hospital. And she didn't. Uh, we, she came and it was vivid. We went for a car ride. And I knew in my head, this is your last time to talk to her. Because she had lost her ability to speak in the hospital. And this is your time to ask her questions. And before I could open my mouth... And, and ask her anything in the dream, she just turned to me and um, said, thank you, I need to get out of there for a while. And just after she said that, the phone rang and she had passed. So that was my last, my last dream that I had that was tangible. Um, I wasn't able to understand her in the hospital when she had her cardiac arrest and came back and she was trying to explain everything that she saw um, because she had lost that, that ability to speak. So I would say 91 was when I totally lost it. And it just became day to day, just getting through the day, keeping a roof over our heads. Um, I even lost interest in following music that I liked artists that I liked, nothing really existed except getting up, going to work and coming home. So. But you didn't really lose it, which we've discovered, no. you know, you right. didn't really lose it. Um, mm -hmm. It may lie dormant and you didn't really want to face it, but I mean, that that's kind of understandable with the grief, you yeah. know, that you went through and, and um, what you experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's fast forward to talking about um something else that you mentioned which i think is a big part of your journey as well uh some people that you worked with because even though you say you lost it and put it away you still reached out to try to discover that part of you mm -hmm. and you've reached out to different people and some of them you refer to as energy vampires or something yeah yeah I, I guess that's a good way of putting it um so, so when it, really. so if you stopped your your um uh put your gifts in a box in 1991 when did you start kind of going and 
to people to try to kind of probably a few years after that um i had reached out to i was introduced to someone by someone that i worked with and she was a channel and started out okay the first session went pretty well but then as time went on um I wasn't getting better. Um, and it made me a little bit more dependent on relying on somebody else for the answers. Uh, the message started changing on some things. Uh, I had some really weird dreams that um, made me feel that it wasn't the best energy to be around. And I just want to pause there and let people realize, see, she never really fully lost it. It was always there. It just was coming through a little bit differently. So she didn't quite recognize it. Well, yeah, the dreams weren't as um, crystal clear, shall we say. They were just a little distorted. And she was one of the first ones that I put my foot down and broke it off cold. And I didn't mean to, but it, she turned it around into a personal attack against my sister and i can fight with my sister but nobody else can so um she blamed it on my sister and it's like no no we're not even going there so and it's been off and on since then it was more you know trying to get it back myself um and just getting lost you know not knowing where to do, where to go what to do you know and what, knowing something else was out there and not being able to find it but that was always something that my mom and my teachers and always said because the the infamous where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I'm going to be 61 next month, and I have no idea. So I still can't answer that question. So always think I'd be living on a ranch someplace, have no idea how I'm going to accomplish that. But hey, you know. I, I like the question, and I heard it, I think I heard it on a podcast somewhere. They, instead of asking their, their children, like, what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? How do you want to be? Uh, perceived and mm -hmm. I was like oh I like that like because yeah. it really talks more about you because when you say like what do you want to be that puts so much pressure on people that whatever they do in life as a job or career defines yes, who I they are and that's mm -hmm. not true yeah yeah and we go through so many changes too bro oh, yeah. um I'm still not done Granted, I'm better than I uh, than I was, um, but I'm still not done. And this is a an ever, you know, evolving process, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, I've, you know, reached out to some other people. Um, in addition to our group, I've, you know, I tried church, it didn't quite sit too well, but I did find some people that were. Because I was always fascinated by the Book of Acts. And it's like, well, why can't we still do that? Why can't we still do healings? Why can't we just, you know. So what is the Book of Acts? The Book of Acts is when they did the healings. Um, they went and it recounts all the interactions that Jesus had during his ministry where he would heal the people. And so that was the recounting of the book and that, and people call it the supernatural part of the Bible. And um, I've always been fascinated by, you know, religions and questioning it at the same time. Um, so, you know, then you get the religious people that say that I don't believe because I'm always questioning it, but I think we should question everything. That's, um, you and I agree on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I've always been fascinated about the the powers of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit 
basically the powers of the Holy Spirit is the, the all-knowing, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, healings. And I've always been fascinated by the healings portion of it. So that's what I've been trying to incorporate more of rather than I've always talked to someone, even as a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I still do that when I take my dog for a walk. If I'm having a bad day, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. I'm not sure who. And sometimes I, you know, don't think anybody's listening because I'm still in the same boat. But I've been praying differently. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing more of prophetic what they call prophetic prayer or speaking truths. Um, kind of similar to the manifestation, the you know, law of attraction, mm -hmm. which I could never get, you know, because I'm always so focused on what's in front of me, you know, where I'm going to be, what do I have to do? And, but with this, it sort of, um, takes the pressure off of getting the wording right, shall we say, you know, so you're not asking for the wrong thing or you're having your thoughts. If you, it's less chance of you getting distracted and focusing on the bad stuff and attracting something that you don't want. Yeah. But so we, that's been helping as well. You mentioned energy vampires and I just kind of like want to, mm -hmm. you can agree or disagree and let me know why um but energy vampires i'm gonna say you're using it and kind of because i know your story using it as like people that were kind of sort of draining your energy but mm -hmm. also not just not draining your energy is like just taking your energy away but the energy that they were putting towards you was very draining and, mm -hmm. and that a lot of the things that they were working from was from more of a negative space and not it really from their heart space. It was right. more, more, let's call it fear-based because that's sort of what it, definitely, what, definitely like when you talk, I remember the first time we actually met in person because mm -hmm. we did online stuff. We did our first session was online, but our first time we actually met in person, we were on the beach. Mm -hmm. and we did a beach it was a beach healing and there was I don't even remember what exactly was but I said something to you and you were telling me about somebody that you had worked with and they kind of like said it uh told you something different and kind of like spun it a little bit differently which made it very like dark mm -hmm. or like a negative negative thing I don't remember what it was but I just remember sitting here having this conversation and it was like the the people that you had worked with in the past also were kind of like telling you if you didn't do it this way this was going to mm -hmm. be the outcome and that's like to me is when we talk a lot about religion that's usually what happens like mm -hmm. if you don't follow the bible then you're going to hell right mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. kind of like how it is, uh, which is totally a different space from where I come from, where it's mm -hmm. like, I'm much more like in the flow. I, you know, know your practice. You don't have to follow things word from word, develop your own mm -hmm. style, develop your own way of meditation. Uh, but they kind of like limited your freedom, which also drained a lot of your energy. Would that be correct? That is so correct. And for the life of me, I cannot remember what that conversation was either because I was in such a dark space. You were I was so uncomfortable just in my own skin. Yeah. And sitting there, I, I honestly don't remember much about the work we did on the beach at all. Yeah. Just I feel like I, something was around a crystal too, but I don't remember fully, but I just remember that, that whole energy and, and the fear. And what I really really love about you and your journey one of the things i really love about you and your journey is that even though you've had all that influence and it wasn't just one person in yeah. your life um you, it was actually because one of the things 
I I get the sense that you were always looking for too was a sense of community and a sense of belonging, which mm-hmm. I feel like we've kind of gotten in our spiritual circle that we have. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's you were always searching for the community, but you your 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 senses came in and you're like you put your toe in there and like yeah I don't know something doesn't feel right, but you were so drawn to wanting to be part of a community, a part of like-minded people, people that understood the gifts that you had that you didn't even quite understand. Mm-hmm. That you just kind of kept trying to go with it. And then you allowed your, your intuition, your, your guidance, your guides to kind of say, uh-uh, pull out, this doesn't really work for me. And you yeah. kept searching for a uh, community and the right people. And I mean, you just didn't just find it with me. You found it with a with some other people as well Mm -hmm. and And some other paths people um actually throughout so long so many different people and not just you know not just people like-minded but even co-workers (laughs) um putting your trust in somebody and then discovering that you know it wasn't returned but yeah you you have it exactly family members with you oh yeah the the last one was family yes yes Mm -hmm or distant family, shall we say, because we weren't very close. And I don't know, it was the insecurity and what I was going through at the time that I was just grasping at straws and the number fell out of the book. And it's like, okay, well, I found the number that means I should call. And I thought it was a good thing at first. And, but like you said, putting limitations um i know there's a term for it where you draw the person in being reassuring and then you take what they confide in you and then you twist it around and say that you said something else and then they start rearranging your memories to the point where you can't remember what were actual memories of what they're trying to tell you. And it's not until they get desperate enough where they start saying stuff that's just out and out blatant that you know it's not true. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, putting putting it on is, rather than pulling it out, yeah, putting it on is more of an accurate description. Um, making you feel like you're less than, making you feel like you can't do anything on your own. Um, you know, that whatever you did was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, it, yeah, it's been a constant thing. The latest one was, and the, it usually ends up with me, you know, finally getting a glimpse and realizing that it's actually more like um, control. They want control yeah. over... And then you start playing back little snippets and a phrase that wouldn't really raise a red flag. All of a sudden it's like, well, what did they really mean by that? Was, you know, and then you start put putting it together. And, and the latest one with the family member that I reached out to, I started regretting. I could feel it. Just deep down side, I was regret. I should never have done this. I should never have done this. And then finally it came to a head and I was, I thought it was a joke at first until I opened up the text and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know? well, I'm, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the one that's disrespectful and didn't appreciate anything. You, you, right. you, get the you, there's no, there's no like coincidence in life. There's no wrong. There's no wrong way. I think I just did a post, a, a, a say there's no wrong going left or going right is not wrong whichever Mm -hmm. one one might light up your your heart a little bit so whatever journey we go on we choose to do and go through is just to make us better Mm -hmm. even through the darkness and through the challenges you know it really is to make get us to where we're doing and to get us better and i feel like part of your journey and here in your humanness in this lifetime right now this time period has a lot to do with boundaries 
mm-hmm. boundaries. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny because at one point I was going to join the services. My sister went into the army. It didn't work out very well. She got sick. But we didn't have a lot of money growing up, and I knew I couldn't go to college. So it made sense. I'll go into the military. I'll go to school. I'll have a job. And my mom says, no, because you have a problem with authority figures, you can't keep your mouth shut. But then I spent my whole life doing exactly what I was told to do, which is mind boggling. I mean, my mom tried to, to ground me when I was 24. <laughs> it was like, and she was living with us. So, but um, no, it, it, boundaries, fear is a big one. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, not wanting to do the wrong thing. Where am I going to be? What's going to happen? Not knowing. Um, and I think when you are living in that type of fear, especially after when you have a lot of loss and things that you had planned are not going to work out, I think you become like a magnet and attract exactly the opposite of what you need. And so it's, it's a case of having to learn that and learn that I'll be okay without, you know, a safety net. Because the reason I, I regretted what I, you know, reaching out to this person. And um, I'm not getting into a lot of detail because I just don't think they, no. they deserve the energy. But I, I regretted reaching out to the person. But I was in fear that they were right. Mm. That's my safety net. They're the only person that's going to be there for me if something happens. Um, where, you know, what's going to happen, you know. So I didn't do anything or speak my mind or stand up for myself or stand up for the memory of, you know, my sister or my parents when, you know, the, the attacks turn personal. And I did it out of fear. Um, and that was the same thing that happened with a friend that I knew for 25 years. For some reason, it's a case of I keep my mouth shut, keep my mouth shut. And then the attacks turn personal. Um, and it's not personal against me. It's personal against my family. And it's like, you know, I confided in you to, you know, kind of clear the air and work things out in my head and have somebody to bounce stuff off of not for you to turn it around and turn it into a personal attack against my family because that you know we did the best we could and we all stuck together so so it takes that to get me to finally stand up um but once i actually before i pulled the final plug i had distanced myself from the person which resulted in the um final nasty text i'll share that one with you sometime i'll I'll copy it to you um i was laughing at it at first until i opened it up and read a mile long text but i had rediscovered what made me happy Mm -hmm. so i was busy doing that just reconnecting with myself and I got in trouble for it because I wasn't thinking of them mm-hmm. or reaching out to them or keeping tech. You know, you haven't told me what you're doing. What are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, really? I'm listening to music. I mean, really, you know, <laughs> nothing really is going on. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I started reaching out and just rediscovering joy. And then, you know, thinking back, it's like, oh, wow, you know, look at all that I missed. And I, I would look at dates on different th- clips that I would find online. And it's like, I didn't even know that happened. Where was I? What was I doing that I totally didn't experience any of this? So it was just a rediscovery process. And, you know, a little bit of melancholy. It's like, oh, could have been there, should have, and didn't. And, and so that was the start of it. And then um, what I thought was a bad thing, then you said it was something different, um, was the, not necessarily, the, well, dreams sort of started again, but they were real cryptic. 
but the um, the sleeping patterns, and um, that's when you confirm that it was not me- just me not being able to sleep. I was actually traveling in my sleep. Yeah. So I knew something was up because I used to be able to do that as well and do different things. So yeah. So in we we did a lot of like I I I was doing uh, back in the early start of getting my business up and going, doing a lot more lives. And, and then I was also doing a lot of group in person or online group sessions. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of us have come, but we've always had an open communication uh, through message, you know, messaging back and forth and certain things, but it, I want to say maybe two years ago in 2020, and maybe at the end of 2020, I started the spiritual circle. Mm -hmm. I have decided come June will be the last one open to public and just kind of closing it to our group that's kind of been there through it because we have developed this community, which has been great. But having meeting with you and and the rest of the group each month, I mean, just seeing everybody grow, but like uh, you can really start to see how things how things progress. Um, I remember the first one of the first spiritual circles you ba- barely even spoke yeah probably not and um you're like yeah I, I didn't really see or feel anything and we were doing meditation and you know what you don't have to you know I'm very mm-hmm. open about that with meditation you know how you do it what comes through everybody's different and then we there was some in the group um who would talk and they would have like very detailed images of everything and uh yeah. and you're like I'm not getting that and I'm like that's okay because yeah, I'm not you're not that. that's that's not your that's not your spiritual gift you're non you're not you know non-physical almost, sense that's not I like, almost dropped out of the group because I just felt like okay I'm I'm not there I'm not at the same level as you guys and and yeah it's and no, just nobody wanted you because we all sat there and I think yeah. that was that was I b- always believed in you and you know I have this belief that all it does it takes one person to believe in you to kind of get you mm-hmm. to start like going but having the other four or five people also believe mm-hmm. in you I think really made a big impact and you kept showing yeah. up and sometimes I would get those messages like yeah I'm having a really bad week I don't think I'm going to be there on on Thursday and it would be like Sunday night or something I'm like Thursday's a long way away. <laughs> Why don't you wait and see? The group might actually make you feel better. And then you yeah. nine times out of ten, because there was maybe one time um you you would show up, or that one time you were trying to show up and you got really frustrated and you were like, No, I'm not doing this. Um, but yeah. I, you know the only one I missed, yeah. You kept showing up, you kept you kept being there, you kept showing up for yourself. That's the big thing. Yeah. You kept showing up for yourself, even though you had these little doubts and those little things. So what are, what are some of the things that help you, helped you turn around? So, um, a year and a half ago or a year ago, I wanted you to come on. I invited everybody from the spiritual group to come on. Um, I've had Cindy on a couple of times from the group. I love our, our chats that we have together. Mm -hmm. Um, and and you were like no but i could see where you were going you were you're at a point where you didn't uh and i hope you don't mind me sharing this but you didn't know where you're going to live or if you're going to stay mm-hmm. because there was a lot going on yeah um and we were kind of your cards in the group the guidance that were come through in the meditation and the conversation was like you need you know you're not going to be in New Jersey all your life. And you're like, I don't know. It's kind of like a security blanket. I get it. Um, And you're like, I don't know. Picking up and and getting in my car and driving away doesn't sound Mm -hmm. like something I want to do. And then um, you also would start, You, I think the one class you signed on and um, it came back to the healing with the animals came up and you were like, Mm -hmm. I was just about to sign up for a course and we're like, hello, what are you doing? And then you started doing these things. You started to yeah. do them and like you would have like, you know, um, 
these steps where you would go out and do like little things. And then you would like, kind of like that fear would come back up. Mm -hmm. And I think like this last year has been like this navigating back and forth of this, but what are some things that you did that really helped you get through these things? Mm. I was trying to think of this before when you first asked me. And I honestly can't put my finger on an exact moment. Um, I just think it's all things. Um, that again, like, and I have to say, it was the readings that you, when you started doing the card pools on a consistent basis, and we would talk about. Them. And sometimes, you know, I think one night we forgot to do the meditation because we were just so into talking about how all our cards were interconnected. And, but I think that was this. I wouldn't say that was the start, but that was when it really started moving along. Um, you know, little things happened where, you know, I wasn't laying in bed at night, crying myself to sleep, begging not to wake up in the morning. And it was full of things that, and I don't, I, I wish there was to like one thing that I could say that was the turning point, but I think it was the consistency and that everybody was there and, you know, little changes each and every time. Um, the conversations that we would have, um, you know, because that's what I remember is the one time that I told you, no, 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 not doing it, not doing it. I don't want, can't do it. I'm in a terrible mood. I think you guys had a terrible time getting me to shut up that night. <laughs> But, um, and, you know, last year when, you know, we were talking about it and I listened to everybody else come on to the podcast and, you know, everybody's so knowledgeable about the, you know, astrology and the energies and, and I was still in limbo. I didn't feel like I had anything to contribute, but basically my contribution if anything for tonight is no matter how deep that pit is you can get out of it i saw these especially thinking back on the past what four going on five years now since my sister passed thinking of what i could have accomplished if i had just relied on me would things turn out differently but that's one of the things I always have problems with hindsight, you know, going hindsight and worrying about the future, never present. Um, I still have the days where I come home and I don't do anything. I won't go for a walk or, you know, you know, other than taking bear for a walk. Um, I'm still in that mindset of familiar, you know, being familiar with, okay, I get up, I go to work, I, you know, I see the same people every day. Um, 2020 was rough because a lot of people didn't come back mm -hmm. from 2020. So what I was looking forward to the most was seeing people that I relied on and they weren't there and then having to discover a new way of dealing with things um, because the familiar people weren't there anymore. So I think it's a little bit of everything that has really changed I don't know what recently has changed, but it's things are coming through a lot clearer, like the message that I got this morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the unsettled life, I actually laughed at it because it reminded me of um, weathermen. It's the only job that you can be wrong all the time and still have a job. Yeah. Because, you know, they're trying to predict the weather. It never happens. So, I, you know, why bother watching? I just started laughing because... They started saying that on weather reports. And it's like, oh, so rather than just predicting what they're going to say and being wrong, they're just going to say unsettled. So anything goes. <laughs> so, yes, the unsettled life. Yeah, that was a message you woke up to this morning was. Yeah. Was an yeah. unsettled life. And I, I actually really love that because. Yeah. Uh, 
I love, I love that. And I, I told you we were, we talk about it on, on the podcast that why I love, love what it said is because, uh, one of, in reflection to you and knowing you, like one of your things is like, you want to know everything. Like you want to know where I'm settling, what my money is, what's this and what's that. And mm -hmm. knowing your, some of your backstory, I kind of understand that, but then you kind of like almost box yourself in, in mm -hmm. a way because you weren't expanding. So when they're like unsettled life, and I feel like you've been living so much more freely now, because mm -hmm. a year ago when we were like, just get in a tr your car and drive off and pack up your stuff. You're like, that sounds great. No, it doesn't. Like it was like this constant hole. And now you're like, you're almost like to the point where you might just pack up your car one day and go like you are, you're almost at that point. And it's like, yeah. there's so much freedom in an unsettled life. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's what I hear when I hear it, I hear freedom. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things I love, like, uh, a friend of mine wants to move out of the place that she's at right now. And like I said to her, when I first met her back in like November, October, I said to her, I said, how are you going to invite somebody into your life, into your space when you have everything filled? Like how would you combine yourself with somebody guilty right and I, and she's like you know i thought about that and i was like yeah because you want a partner you want to bring somebody in you eventually want to mm -hmm. get married and you want to live with somebody but like where are they going to live in this space mm -hmm. fast forward to that was like october november or whatever fast forward to what are we in april i almost said may <laughs> it's really fast forwarding yeah. um but like a couple months, a couple of weeks ago, she's like, I want to move. And I'm like, that's a lot of work. Like when I say I want to pack up and move right now, well, I didn't move across the country with a lot of stuff. And I still have a lot of stuff that I should just probably sell at this point that's hanging out in my parents' yeah. uh, garage because I didn't know what I was doing. And I still don't know what I'm doing, but I, you know, I, I do eventually want to move to California or you know, maybe it's not California. Maybe I end up somewhere else and I'm okay with that. And that that's part of it is like being okay with it. But I was like, unsettled chaos. It's okay. Like yeah. whatever it was, it's just like, you're in this space. I don't have a lot of stuff. I can pack up and move. Mm -hmm. I can do this. Like, and it's part of releasing the attachment because mm -hmm. your, your attachment isn't necessarily to like, maybe physical, uh, like a lot of physical option objects and stuff like that. Although there is, but there is, but that's all trauma based anyway, because but, of everything that got ripped away with Sandy. Right. But you're to me, part of your attachment was to the past because that's when I met you, you kept wanting to go back to the past. You kept going back to the past. You couldn't move forward because you just kept wanting to go to the past mm -hmm. and be in the past. And your attachment was a lot to the past. And mm -hmm. you're like, slowly now you're like, nope, moving forward, moving forward. And you had a dream, a dream recently. I think it was the dream that you might've astro traveled as well, where you went back to your home. The mm -hmm. home you had with your sister, mm -hmm. I think it was, but you went back to your one of homes and you like reached out to me and you're like, in that same thought process where I want, I want to go back to that. Mm -hmm. And it, and in the past that would have maybe brought you down days mm -hmm. or weeks. And I think months, to, <laughs> months yeah. The consistently showing up for yourself, mm -hmm. doing meditations, doing things more for yourself, setting mm -hmm. boundaries, um, understanding your gifts that you have more yeah. mm -hmm. and journaling because that's been mm -hmm. um, and just getting back to some things that you love has really shifted that and I think after that when you text me about that dream I think that was like a day that you were kind of like not even a day you were kind of like mm -hmm. that. and it was just such a switch as like nope I'm not going back I'm moving forward yeah well, just a couple of weeks ago, somebody saw me and they're like, well, if you give me all the paperwork, let's see what we could do. And I just immediately went to, well, a lawyer won a $10,000 five years ago. The house has to be gutted now. I'm, I'm just 
ticking everything off because my dad was a builder. Okay, there's broken windows now. The floor is probably destroyed now. And it's like, no. And then I, I thought back, it's like, what what is it that I really want? And basically, well, I miss my kitchen. I miss my bedroom. And the whole house, they're the only two areas that I miss. Um, miss the yard, but it was the the freedom of having my own place. I could put something on the wall. I could change the color of the wall. I could find a project to do, you know. Um, you know, little things like that. I could have another dog if I wanted to have another dog. I, you know, um, I knew what my expenses were pretty much and didn't have to depend on somebody else to dictate what I'm going to pay. Um, it was the security of it almost being paid off and knowing where I would be to, you know, the freedom. And what was funny is this past week, I've been playing around with taking, I, I need to um, take a withdrawal. And I even called my uh, accountant and he says, well, it's not like you're going to go out on a spending spree. He said, you're doing it just to make yourself comfortable. And I said, yeah, because I said, tomorrow it's not promised anyway. I said, Claudia and I had lots of dreams and what we were going to do. And we were two weeks shy of the next month was we were going to be okay. And then the next month after that was going to be better. But she passed in the end of August. And then there's also the fear that my sister, all my sisters have passed. They, the one passed in her 40s, the one passed in her 50s. Claudia passed at 61, and I'm going to be 61. So there is that fear that I'm, I'm working with right now. Um, so I immediately just went past that. I figure I don't like the number 61 anyway, so I tell <laughs> people I'm 62. <laughs> Claudia used to say I was five years older anyway. Well, you know but, what? Uh, you know, in, in listening to you talk, it's also one your mind shift your mind mindset has totally shifted but like um you recognize these fears and you're like no I don't want these anymore mm -hmm. and it's not like you're letting it like okay I see this this is a fear and I don't want this mm -hmm. okay so what what can I do to start doing that and like okay I'm going to start telling everybody I'm 62 like I've already done it and there's nothing wrong with that yeah you know and it's not saying that you didn't face it it's part of the fear is in the number. Yeah. Which is why that you'll go into like buildings and there'll be no 13. Not that there's not a 13th floor, but it's the fear in the number, which I absolutely love the 13th. And I was yeah. so funny. Side note, I was looking for flights to fly back uh, east in June. Like, wow, the 13th really is cheap. I don't understand. Why is the 13th so cheap? And then I was like, <laughs> it's because it's the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, but yeah, you know, I love the number. It's been my number. It was one I wore yeah. in sports, so I couldn't understand it, but it was funny. Mm -hmm. But it's in the number. So I think that's yeah. that is really great and amazing what yeah. what you do, what you have done. Your mindset is different. Mm -hmm. Um and the same thing with taking the withdrawal. Would can I get by without taking that withdrawal? Yeah, I probably could. But there's that fear that I might not have enough money or I won't be able to pay this bill or, you know. So just knowing that it's available and it's, that number is sitting in my bank account, looking back at me, makes me feel better. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I might do that. And then I drove over to the post office to mail my, um, my taxes, cloudy day. The sun, if it was up, would be on the opposite end of the island, not behind me. And I'm looking at it and it's like, dang, that sign is bright. What's reflect? And it was the passport sign. Apply for a passport. <laughs> and I'm and it didn't dawn on me till I was going to work and it's like, the sun's not out, it's cloudy. How did that sign get so bright? And so I'm back on the passport. You know, my I think it's a great is, idea. Now I've always wanted to see Australia. You know, fifth year anniversary of my sister's passing. We always planned, said we were going to go. Maybe I'll go. Of course, the flight's about $1,600. But 
don't get caught up in that. You just started off the podcast about the new uh, way you were praying and intention setting. Yeah. So allow that to be what it is. Uh, yeah. One last thing before we kind of wrap up, because I just looked at the time and we've been having a nice long chat here mm-hmm. today. Um, I want to talk about your healing abilities with animals because mm-hmm. this has come up um, in readings that we've had. Um, you've talked about your past and in, in mm-hmm. working with animals. Um, it came out in the cards. I can remember as uh, Eve sitting there, like trying to shake you and say, "Why aren't you working?" With, like through this computer screen, like shake you. In that <laughs> point, she like I, I, she was so fired up that day. Um, yeah. But you have such a great connection with animals. Mm-hmm. Worked with your own uh, dog, Bear, you know, and helped mm-hmm. him. Um, yeah, I had two previous fails, which kind of got me off course. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but you have the, this beautiful ability to communicate with animals mm-hmm. and to heal animals. Um, I think it's a direction for you kind of to go into when you're ready. And I think you're kind of like doing it like you've done everything, put your toe in it and see how it was, put your toe mm-hmm. in it. Um read a book, take a course, you know, put it to and like, see how it is work with her. But I mean, just think about you telling the story at the beginning about mm-hmm. how you worked in the vet's office. Mm-hmm. You can do that. Mm-hmm. You have proof. Like you have proof you've done it before. Yeah. yeah. And you can do it. And I, and I, you know, having these little ups and downs with bear recently and you're like, you failed attempt. You didn't fail anything. Nothing mm-hmm. was a failure. Remember what Jesus said. You're going to have to remind me of that one because right. I can't think of what so, you're, although which, mm-hmm. which one you're going for here. Yeah. Well, there it's kind of two faults. One, you can only help those who are open and ready to be helped. Mm-hmm. And healing isn't about curing. True. And he said that too. Like he knew he couldn't give the sight back to the blind man, Mm -hmm. but he healed the blind man's relationship to not having his sight. Right. So healing is not about curing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I, and I feel like when you get into those two things and you really start to have a full understanding that that's just going to open up because there is an, uh, opportunities out there for you in that, mm-hmm. in that area. And, um, I'm sure some yeah, people right. listening, you know, will do it. Uh, dogs are, and cats and all, you know, all, all animals, but you can, you can help so many, so many people. Yeah. yeah. Because that's such a beautiful gift to be able yeah. to do. Yeah. You're, and you're, it's like you're giving a voice to them. I, I got some work to do on that one to see oh. where I'm going to go with it and We're, what direction. Yeah. So, um, you know, part of that is you learning to trust yourself. You know that. Mm-hmm right but the other part is comparing yourself we Mm -hmm. are all unique and individual sure you know i could sit here and tell you that i'm not going to do this work anymore because so many people do this work Mm -hmm. but that would be doing a disservice to myself and to disservice to everybody i i speak and i talk to Mm -hmm. um and somebody else's gifts doesn't negate your gifts and your ability yeah and how you connect and that's in anything like you're gonna have you know people like well how does how in the spiritual world or whatever you want to call it the holistic world um how's there bad people well you know there's and then not to say bad people but we're just going to leave it at that just to make it easier to understand right mm-hmm. uh, as a word there's there's this there's people that put themselves out there that are genuine and and there are people that don't, no matter where. You look at mm-hmm. car salesmen, they always get a bad rap, but there's some really mm-hmm. good ones out there that are looked after you. Yeah. They want you to have the car. 
Mm-hmm. Same thing with like doctors. There's doctors in out there. I think my last podcast, I talked about the doctor I went to that didn't even touch my arm and was trying to tell me that something totally different was wrong with it. It's out oh, there yeah. everywhere. Mm-hmm. So oh, put your good funny. heart out there. Yeah. You're going to attract the people that are drawn to you to go to work with you. Yeah. And I, that's, I think- that's not just for you. That's for everybody else listening to you, you know, including myself, but, yeah. you know, it's a reminder. We have to remind, remind ourselves and, you know, and yeah, you know, I, I think it's all too with my own healing. I think I'm finally getting to that point. Now I relied on doctors and they failed me. Um, it wasn't until recently that I realized I healed my own wrist that I've been dealing with for over a year or more. Um, actually, since about, probably about 2020. So it's been three years. Oh, yeah. And I tried everything. Tried doctors, traditional doctors. I tried, you know. I've sit here and everything. I've watched you heal all different parts of you. Yeah. Like, you know, headaches and arms and like. Mm-hmm. you're you're an amazing healer and you started off this conversation about you being a healer mm-hmm. and that's true and I uh, we are all amazing healers and on your healing journey you're the healer yeah I might call myself a healer that's just for a I don't know what else I would actually call myself but I always but say I'm the, I'm the facilitator of the healing I help yeah. facilitate I help bring the pieces together you know, I guide you and you might ask me a question. And I turn the question back on you in different, yeah, all the time. different perspective because all it's about time. you. It's not about me. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the guidance do come through for different yeah. things, but yeah, I could sit here and talk to you even longer, but we, uh, we've been having a nice yeah. chat for this and I'll probably have you back to talk about your healing animal practice that you start up. <laughs> or your dive into the Akashic records, which we haven't even talked about, which I would love to talk about one day. Oh, but yeah. yeah. I think at this point, though, uh, we've probably been on the here for about an hour. We should probably wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. We never even touched on Akashic. I, yeah. That, is, that has changed a lot, too. And I love the fact that you sat here and like, I don't have anything about to talk about. I don't even know what to talk about. And here we are. Um, yeah. I don't know, an hour, an hour, 15, hour and a half into the conversation, whatever the time ends up being. And yes. we still could keep going on and on and on and on. Yeah. yeah. But I do, I do want to um, ask you a question and then I kind of want to end on notes. Anybody that's going through their healing journey right now, okay, um, no matter what state of their journey they are in. What would you recommend for them? Don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up because, you know, you'll find that one person or you'll find multiple people. I don't think you can heal yourself with one modality at all. Um it would be nice if it was all, all done neat, but you just keep an openness mm-hmm. and don't give up because you, you'll you hear something and don't push it off because I've done that in the past as well. And I almost did this recently. Um, oh, it's just a gnat. Oh, it's just a gnat. You know, what is that person going? You know, it. It popped up on my Facebook feed, you know, but, you know, things happen for a reason that that ad popped up on the Facebook, but you connected with it. You watched it for a reason. You you owe it to yourself to explore it and, and find it. But the the basic thing is don't give up because God, we can probably talk an hour on all the different ways I plan to uh, uh, get off this rock, but you know, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. so and I don't think about it and the fact that I dedicated so much time thinking about it in the past just totally floors me now so I but, love yeah 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 I'd, I'd say the the biggest takeaway from here is you know don't give up 
Yeah. You know, you were, you were in a enough spot and you didn't give up and, and don't, and you're right. It takes many, you know, it could take multiple people mm-hmm. it could take multiple different healing modalities. And I a hundred percent agree with you on that. Like, it's not one size fit all. It's not one person. It's not, you know, there's so many different ways for you to heal and work, you know, and mm-hmm. keep on looking. If something didn't work or resonate with you, then try something else. Um, yeah, because it doesn't negate what you've done in the past and it doesn't make what you're doing with one group any less. If, and, you know, you, you'll know when you, you meet your right tribe. Yeah. It's basically what it is. You, you'll know. Um, you know, I went off on different things and then, you know, you just feel it and you say, okay, this isn't really helping. And, you know, the one thing that I tried that has helped, I heard my sister like, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, you don't talk to me any other time, but okay, I'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, just, you know, having a place where you can connect like with our spirit circle. Uh it's just a safe place where I can say anything I want I can have the worst day or I can have a giddy day it doesn't matter I'm not going to get judged yeah I'm not going to get judged it's a safe place where you know okay I had a bad day I don't want to get out of bed I had a bad day I don't know how I'm going where I'm going to be you know and you know I'm only recently to the point where I'm not focused on the bad things. So. Yeah. I'll still make a casual joke and I know I shouldn't say it and I should do cancel clear on it, but, you know, like, okay, well, you know, what's worse? I'll be living in my car, you know, but cancel clear. I don't really want to live in my car, especially with 160 pound bulk. <laughs> True. But, but I, I think, you know, I think part of the reason why you say it is because you know what, if it happens, oh, well, it happens and I'll be okay with it. It's not going to be forever. I think that's more where your man, your, your yeah, mental yeah. state is. And I love the yeah. fact that you said openness too, uh, because that's also something good. But uh, I was listening to another podcast about soccer and the uh, person went up to somebody doing a PK and he goes, like, the worst thing you could do is you miss it. We lose the game. And the best thing they could have, sometimes that's what happens. You have to kind of really, really, I mean, it's facing your fears. Like it's aware, mm-hmm. like, but it's not even a, at, at this point, when you say that it's really not even a fear, it's just like, yeah, you know, maybe I will be living in the car and I'm like, yeah, I'll make do, I'll figure it out. Like, yeah. and, and yeah. before, I think before it would have totally freaked you out, but my okay. final thoughts on, um, to wrap up the, the podcast uh, is today, I think you're absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate you sitting down and sharing the story. And I really, really do appreciate and so grateful that I've been on this journey with you in the last, oh, I don't know, a few, three, four I years. I totally now. agree. Um, I, I don't think I could have done it without you. To I've see, told you that many times. To see you grow so much, like that's the, that is, that is the, the biggest reward that I can get ever get is to watch somebody grow. And, you know, I, I did this even when watching people grow and you have grown so much um, since I met you and you've really got, got yourself out of the dark hole when you climbed up and, and um, I, I, I the see it. it and it's yeah. absolutely amazing. It's amazing and it gives me faith in people and it gives me faith in, in knowing that no matter where I'm at, I can always get out, get through it and get out of it. And I'm seeing the difference with how people are reacting to me as well. Yeah. The energy shift has been so significant that people that wouldn't have even looked in my direction or making eye contact and talking yeah. people that I thought were the most horrible people that to deal with really aren't that bad. Um, you know, so it's, 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 you know, it's, it's just getting out of that energy and it's so hard to do. And it's so easy to get pulled in 
and you know I, like i call them the amateur vampires they there's people that feed on it yeah they they keep you in that that spot because they you know you're easily pliable and manipulated and unfortunately some you know unless you can recognize it you're going to be their victim and stay under their control and um so it's it's just not giving up and and trusting you gotta trust yeah trust yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a we big can do a whole other podcast on that, but we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm so grateful for you. And uh, um, I can't wait to see where your journey continues to go and grow. Yeah. yeah. Have a great day, everybody. Um, go out and spread some love in this world. And we're sending all our love to all of you. Till next time. Bye-bye for now.